Please bear with me for a moment on this as I need to set the foundation of this video by sharing something from Hebrews chapter 9 verses 14 to 18 to help the Bible believing obedient babes in Christ see the truth in this. It says, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where, now please listen to this part, for where a testament is there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. In other words, even the Old Testament sacrifices had to spill blood so as to grant the believers forgiveness of their sins. And so just as the believers of the Old Testament offered a spotless lamb as a blood sacrifice to have their sins forgiven so as to receive the promise of eternal inheritance, which is life in heaven as we know it, the believers in the New Testament must also declare the death of the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That's why John the Baptist said it like that. He is our blood sacrifice for our sins so that we can receive the same eternal inheritance. This passage in Hebrews confirms that even Jesus himself could not change the Ten Commandments, and this includes the Seventh-day Sabbath that was kept in heaven by angels long before Jews were ever even born. And I say that because so many people have been taught to think that the Ten Commandments was only for the Jews. All the believers of old offered a spotless lamb believing Messiah would come in the future to be that lamb sacrifice in reality for those sins that they committed in the past. And since Jesus came in the exact year the prophet Daniel said he would, we also see that Jesus gave instructions and then died exactly three and a half years after arriving as the prophet Daniel also prophesied he would do. And we know that the testament is of force after men are dead, as Paul puts it. That means now that Jesus has died for us, he can in no way change his law or his testament now that it is sealed in his blood. The basic reality here is this. If Jesus was to change his testament, he would have to have done it before he died. Because as Paul stated, a testament can be changed while the testator lives because it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth, as Paul said. In other words, since no blood has yet spilt to seal it, it can be changed. For even to this day, we all know that a last will and testament cannot be changed after the death of the testator. If you believe the Bible, you know that after Jesus gave us instruction in as many words and sermons, or as the legal term would be here, he gave his testimony or testament while walking among us 2,000 years ago, Jesus then offered himself as a sacrifice to forever seal his testament by his death. That is what his blood represents. It was spilled in death, and so he presents his blood before the Father, declaring his testament to now be eternal and unchangeable. There's no mistaking the fact that directly after he gave us what the Bible calls the testimony of Jesus Christ, he then died for us so as to seal his last will and testament. And so, all one needs to do now is ask any lawyer about this basic reality. Is it not a fact that a last will and testament is considered binding after the person dies? The lawyers will tell you it can only be changed before the testator dies. However, they will also stipulate that it can be changed after the testator dies, but only on one condition. This is why last will and testaments always start with the words, I am of sound mind and body, right? The people closest to the deceased would have to present evidence in a court of law that the testator was not of sound mind and body when that last will and testament was penned. That being an age-old fact of law, 
This clearly shows us that since the Roman Catholic Church has admitted in writing many times that they changed the Christian Sabbath in the Bible from the seventh day to the first day of the week, they removed commandment number two so as to be able to bow and worship before statues, and then changed commandment number 10 to make it appear to be commandments numbers 9 and 10 so as to make all believe that they still have 10 commandments like everyone else, that means the popes of the Roman Catholic Church are boldly declaring to every Catholic person as well as every other denomination that bows to them that they believe and teach that Jesus Christ was not of sound mind and body when he died for us. In other words, they are claiming Jesus Christ was insane, and so now they can change his testament. And that, my brothers and sisters, is nothing more than a bold-faced lie from the dying God of Rome, for he has always been a liar and the father of liars since day one. But the bottom line is this, which seems better for you and your loved ones? I mean, think about this. Living in an eternal city whose builder and maker is God, wherein the law of the land that blesses its citizens can never be changed, whereby eternal peace and safety are the end result of living in that city? Or would you rather live in a city whose builder and maker is Satan, with a law that is based on the flesh of popes and prelates, which can easily be changed, as they have done many times over the centuries, where in so doing places its citizens in eternal jeopardy? Well, it seems like an easy choice to me. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. For only our God has a kingdom which cannot be moved. Thank you for watching. God bless.